Welcome to this ACCA P4 Advanced Financial Management quick introduction and my name is Dave. So now let's say the P4 as you can see is the Advanced Financial Management quite different from the F9 but to a perfect knowledge review you've got uh, I mean we've got lots of this overlap between the F9 and P4. Uh, you studied quite hard in the F9 so when you come to P4 you find it more interesting. So again in the P4, quite a lot of things that we've covered in the F9, so let's see what are they then. So personally, I would divide the P4 syllabus into four particular chapters here for the APC. The first chapter, we are going to explain the financial crisis happened in 2008. So what do I mean by financial crisis is this. In the 2008, the USA government has pumped quite a lot of its money into the financial system. Because the financial system has got lots of its money nowadays. And then what the bank's going to do is to lend this money to lots of people to earn the capital gain or the interest. So as a result of it, the bank find quite a lot of its money on hand to lend it to different people irrespective of their credit status is strong or weak. So, as time goes by, people with a weak credit status will find it difficult to pay back the money to the bank. And hence, what the bank's going to do is to withdraw the houses from their hand. So, as a result of it, with lots and lots of people finding it difficult to pay back the money to the bank, the bank withdraw more houses from their hands and the bank believes that the, houses, uh, that the house prices will increase again and again in the future and hence the bank is happy to do that but as the demand for the houses is less than the supply because we've got more houses on hand and also more and more people find it well it may be profitable in the future when we're building up the houses of course the supply for the houses is significantly higher than the demand and as a result of it leading to the houses prices drops significantly in the 2008 and then, and then more and more people with a mortgage for the houses of course they would like to not pay the money back to the bank anymore and then allowing the bank to withdraw the houses from their hand because they find it useless and worthless and that's the crisis happens in 2008 and of course, this process is conducted using the asset securitization process. And of course, we will explain that in the chapter one and also in the chapter four of our study within the current issue. And then within the chapter one, we also have to deal with the corporate governance as well. So that means we need to know from the P4, I mean the treasurer's perspective, yes, you are in the role of the treasurer, you have to consider different stakeholders involved. You have to deal with multinational companies, for example. And that's the reason why we are going to focus on those in the chapter one. And after we look at the chapter one, the chapter two then is we'll look at the accounting equation. I always say to my students, what is the difference between the financial management and the financial accounting? Is this. Financial management is the process that designing the management activities that you've got, for example, invest your money into where and how to raise your finance and as at the year event. Kata, we've got the snapshot, which which means we are going to use the debits and credits, showing that summarizing all those management activities during the year into a set of financial statements, including a statement of financial position, PL, change in equity and cash flow. So that's the difference between the financial management and the financial accounting. Financial accounting is just to record all those bits and pieces using the accounting equation and hence by focusing on the accounting equation we can detail all those management activities related to P4. So for example we've got I mean within the uh, accounting equation we've got the asset equals the liability plus equity. The asset means is the investment decisions we are going to make because we are going to use the money from the liability or equity and sometimes both of the liability and equity to invest that money into buying the non-current asset 
So that's the reason why we've got the asset equals the liability plus equity. So when focusing on the asset side, which is the investment decision, in the paper P4 exam, not only we're going to deal with the domestic investment appraisal project. So for example, we're going to use the normal MPV analysis, IRR, internal rate of return, accounting rate of return, payback period, sort of things that we've covered in the F9, or perhaps it will detail, for example, the asset replacement decisions, capital rationing, or make or buy decision, or perhaps, uh, I mean, lease or buy decision as well. So those will be the things that we've covered in the management accounting paper and also the F9 papers already. Not only for that, within the domestic uh, investment appraisal, we'll have to also consider is some of the advanced techniques. So for example, we said that the internal rate of return has got uh, quite a lot of these limitations. One of the biggest limitations is that it will create a different result when appraising a project when using the MPV and IRR. Quite normally this happens. And as a result of it, we will introduce, for example, the more defined internal rate of return to deal with this problem. And also we can say that the payback period doesn't consider the time value of money. Of course, we'll explain that in a second, don't worry. So that what we are going to do then is we're going to improve that by using the discounted payback period method. And perhaps we say that, well, the MPV is not that useful. It's simply because, as you can see, the MPV, when discounting the cash flow, we are using the weighted average cost of capital. But to me, some of the cash flows are not associated with the financial risk. For example, the sales revenue as well as the expenses. And as a result of it, why not just to divide the discount factor into two parts? One is associated with business risk, one is associated with the financial risk by introducing a new method called APV rather than the MPV, etc. Of course, we've got duration, back sales option pricing model, so those sorts of things that we are going to cover in the investment decision, don't worry, it's simple. In addition to that, we are also required to know the international investment appraisal. And that means not only we're going to consider when using the MPV or APV when doing the project, but also we are required to predict the future exchange rate. But the question is, well, what is the future exchange rate? We now got to the spot rates because we can find it in the bank or maybe on the website. But what is the future? Who knows the future? Of course, nobody knows the future, and that's the reason why you are as the treasurer now. You are required to predict what's going on in the future by using some of the theories, such as the purchasing power parity theory, or perhaps this interest rate parity theory. And also, you're required to deal with the double tax relief, and also retranslation process. Yes, that would be the international investment appraisal. Not that difficult at all, trust me. We will explain to you in a simple manner, so you can ha uh, so, so you're happy about it within the investment decision of course as you can see as we invest more and more money so that the business will grow and then perhaps we are going to sell our business to somebody else so that's the reason why we will focus upon the business valuation as well so in addition to what we've learned in the f9 for example we've introduced to you the book value method but also we are required to know how to calculate the intangible asset value in the paper for as well. Not only for those book value approach, but also we are required to know the cash flow approach, including a free cash flow approach. Alternatively, we are going to use, for example, the market approach as well. For example, using a PV, PE. Uh, using, for example, the dividend yield basis, for example. So all sorts of things that we are going to cover. And of course, in the paper four, you are required to know the Black Souls option pricing model, or you can call it the BSOP model. It sounds a little bit complicated, but in fact it's not, trust me. All you need to do is to copy the pro forma from your examiner, giving it, giving it, the, giving it the exam, and then you're going to quickly, I mean, 
pick up the data from the question, slot that into pro forma, and of course you can get the answers out. Business valuation in the paper four, you're also required to know how much that the seller is willing to sell so that we can keep both of the seller and buyer happy. So all we can do is we compare the costs with the income that we will get. For example, your current share price is $3. If I offer to buy your share at $4 per share, of course, you'll be better off because you are currently worth three, but I'm willing to buy at four, right? But you are better off. But what if I spend four dollars to buy a three dollars worth of share? Will I be better off? Or perhaps the answer for that is no. That's caused the goodwill, yeah, from my perspective, yeah, because we pay more one dollars more to buy your share. And as a result of it, from the financial accounting at the, as at the year end, we are going to show that $1 as the good way. So, in the business valuation, quite interesting indeed. Trust me, we will explain that in a second. And then, of course, as our company grows stronger and stronger, bigger and bigger, we will expand our business overseas. How we're going to manage the risks will be absolutely important. So the risk management in the paper form will play a very important role and many students find it difficult. But trust me, if you're studying with us, we will have our own mnemonics to solve all those risk management questions, including the foreign exchange rate risk management and also the interest rate risk management. All you can do is you're going to use our pro forma and then you look at the question and pick up the numbers from the question, slot that into a pro forma, hey, job's done. So that's the risk management. And of course, in the chapter number one, as you can see, we'll have all, I mean, chapter two, we'll have all sorts of things that we're going to cover. For example, investment decision, and then look at the right-hand side of the accounting equation, it's the financial decision. And that means where does the money come from? And also we are required to calculate the costs of capital on top of those. Approximately 80% of the knowledge in the financing decision that you have already covered in the paper F9 already. But on top of that, additional 20% of the marks will be related to the Modiglioni and Miller's theory application. That's so called the M and M. It's not a chocolate, but it's two people in there. So the basic idea behind the M&M &M in the paper four is we're going to use the M&M's theory to predict if the organisation borrows extra liability, what would be the future or estimated cost of capital B. That is the financial decision that we're going to look at. And also we will look at the dividend policy decision. And that means by how much dividends that we are going to pay for our shareholders, we'll keep the shareholders happy. Yes, very, very important indeed. That is the chapter two. Chapter three then within our P4 is we'll look at the corporate reconstruction and reorganization. So in simple words, Corporate reorganization is just to be a changes in group structure. For example, in the paper P2, corporate reporting, we've studied the changes in group structure. For example, during the year we dispose of 30% of shares, or perhaps we sell off all of these subsidiaries to somebody else. We sell off all of these assets within the subsidiary to somebody else. Yes, that would be the corporate reorganization. Because all we can do is we're going to improve the organization's performance. That's the reason why we're going to do that. And of course, you can argue that within a business reorganization, there'll be decentralization of our, I mean, departments. Yes, that will be included in there as well. But corporate reconstruction is we're going to save our business. So for example, if, if we've got lots of debt at the moment onto our statement of financial position, for example, $100 billion, 
how are we going to get rid of this $100 billion? Perhaps we can go bankrupt so that, of course, we can get rid of them. Or perhaps we are going to exchange that liability with somebody else with the equity. For example, you're the shareholder, I'm the uh, company, I've got lots of liability, for example, $100 billion. I'm asking you, well, are you willing to buy our company and be responsible for this $100 billion? Because from my perspective, I think our company's value after buying it is much greater than $100 billion worth of liability. So after you buy a company, you'll be better off. Can I persuade you doing that? This is the debt for equity swap. So whether or not you will do that will really depend upon the value of our company. Yeah? And that's the reason why you will use quite a lot of these techniques that you've learned in the business valuation to value our business and compare that equity value with the liability value. That's the idea behind the corporate reconstruction. There will be not too much theory related to this part. All you have to understand and all the examiner will test you is about the business valuation knowledge that you've studied and then applying it in the practical case. That's it. So, the, I mean, the final chapter that we are going to look at is the current issue. So current issue, we've got lots of things that we are going to cover. For example, the asset securitization that we've just mentioned, money laundering, that poor trading system. And of course, we will explain that in a second, don't worry. And of course, we will explain the roles of different financial institutes, for example, the WTO, the uh, World Bank, the IMF, etc. So those are sort of things that we are going to cover in the due course. I hope you find it very interesting for the paper P4. I hope you find it not too difficult right now because the P4 can be divided into four chapters personally. And good luck and look forward to seeing you in the actual class. APC, accounting for your future.